in the last part, I made up the receiver board. So laying it out, marking it up, etching it, cleaning it up. Now it's all ready for construction. So I'll start with the two bandpass filters. Then we'll test them, make sure they're working satisfactorily. This is a pencil sketch of the two bandpass filters, 40 metres at the top and 20 metres at the bottom. They're taken from the MTR5B by Steve Weber KD1JV. And Steve uses all surface mount inductors, well, two surface mount inductors for each of the filters. And the 20 metre ones are 4 mic 7. So the impedance is going to be 50 ohms at the antenna end and about 1K at the receiver mixer end because the MTR5B uses an SA612. Time to get cracking. So hopefully the two bandpass filters can be seen here. This is the 40 meter filter here. This is the 20 meter filter here. So these are 10 microhenry surface mount inductors in the 40 meter filter. Um, these are surface mount trim caps and the rest are just um, 1208 surface mount capacitors. And we know that the input impedance of an SA612 is about a kilo ohm. Now that's no use for um, sweeping with my scalar network analyzer, which is expecting to see 50 ohm impedances front and back. So in order to test this, I've made up a simple impedance transformer with 16 turns on the primary and four turns on the secondary. So 16 to four is a ratio of four to one turns ratio. That's a 16 to one impedance transformation. 1000 ohms on the primary should uh, should transform to 62 ohms on the secondary. And I've just taken that secondary winding up to this uh, pin header here and out to the scalar network analyzer. So I should be getting close to 50 ohms here. This is just a temporary test transformer, which of course will be removed. This is the test rig for the two bandpass filters. So this is my old scalar network analyzer. It's from Midnight Design Solutions. And uh, another fellow home brewer very kindly passed it on to me a few years back and I've quite got used to using it. So I've set up a script here which spans from around about 10 megahertz to about 22 megahertz. So the 20 meter bandpass filter is in circuit. And here you can see the sweep. The 3 dB points are coming up at 12.96, about 13 megahertz, and 15.7 megahertz. So 13 megahertz on the low side, 15.7 megahertz on the high side, bandwidth 2.8 megahertz. And the peak of the filter is at 14.220. Now that's very easily tuned. And it's showing the insertion loss as being minus 5.7 dBm. So by way of calibration, I took the bandpass filter out and just ran RF out straight to RF in, and I got between 0.1 and 0.9 dB. So probably about 0.5 dB could be considered um, loss um, internal to the instrument. So even so, that's about 5 dB of insertion loss which is, you know, it's okay, it's not great, it's a little bit high. But remember that I am using this matching transformer on the output and um, I'm not exactly sure that that's, uh, that's set up exactly correctly. Now one of the fun things you can do is to repeat this sweep continuously and I'll start that just by starting the sweep and it's going to repeat and draw a new line with a different color every sweep, about not quite one a second. And as I'm tuning, hopefully you can see that I'm sweeping the center of this filter across quite a considerable range, probably two and a half megahertz. So I'll put it back to about where it needs to be. So I can adjust both the 
trimmers in the bandpass filter for the best shape and we're sort of getting too many lines the lines are all piling up now so I'm just going to get out of that and run it again to refresh the display so there it is and we've ended up with the filter peak on 13.3 megahertz so I'm just going to tune the filter peak up a little bit now this display up on the top doesn't seem it doesn't appear to refresh so um, I'll have to I'll have to retune it but but you can see with the continuous sweep how easy it is to uh, to tune bandpass filters so that's the 20 meter bandpass filter done so now the 40 meter bandpass filter is is in circuit so now I have a second script and this one sweeps from I think it's three to yeah three megahertz to 12 megahertz And this is showing um, peak of the bandpass filter, the 40 meter bandpass filter at 7090 kilohertz. And it's showing minus 9.4 dB of insertion loss, which is really quite a lot. Why is the 40 meter bandpass filter showing a 9 dB insertion loss when the 20 meter filter is showing a 5 dB insertion loss? I'm not exactly sure. I did put an antenna, a resonant antenna on the input and I took the output into one of my shack receivers and both bandpass filters do tune up very nicely and appear to have not all that much attenuation. So I'm just wondering whether or not the discrepancy might be something to do with this transformer. You know, my initial thought was, oh, it's because I've used surface mount inductors Maybe I should pull those 10 microhenry surface mount inductors off. Maybe their Q's not high enough and replace them with a hand-wound toroidal inductance of 10 microhenries. But I'll keep that idea up my sleeve. I don't think I'm going to do it just yet because I don't really trust what this uh, transformer is doing. And I do suspect that when I pull this out and get the SA612 product detector working uh, that I might um, gauge the relative performance of the two bandpass filters at that point and not get too carried away thinking I've got super lossy inductors in the 40 meter filter at this point in time. So I'm going to call those bandpass filters tested and, uh, and we can move on to the next stage. Well the receiver board now has two working bandpass filters for a way of switching between them. The next stage will be to solder on the remaining components and just test them step by step. Shouldn't be too much more work to get the receiver going. I hope you can keep watching. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.